Oh boy, is this one of those Christian persecution movies? <laughs> what do you think? The film is literally called Persecuted. Persecuted is a little seen 2014 political thriller. It takes the intrigue out of political intrigue. It's all about an evangelist named John Luther because calling him Matthew Mark Luke John Luther would be too obvious who refuses to back an evil senator's religious reform bill. So what do the corrupt politicians do? Well, obviously, they frame him for the rape and murder of a young girl and turn him into a fugitive. So, you know, the movie's science fiction. Too many evil politicians are trying to silence our evangelical leaders for not supporting their bills that have yet to pass through the House and Senate. Before we get to this bullshit, it's best we open the film with a quote from someone who knows about actual persecution. The movie gets to the fat and sweaty protesters right away. I'm not sure exactly what they're protesting, but I know that they're very angry and are definitely gonna catch pneumonia. So much for me saying God bless you when you sneeze. The movie stars the great James Remar, Everything you were ever in is better than this. John Luther goes to the one place a middle-aged white man can feel persecuted, Fox News. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. I don't belong to any particular religious denomination. You're definitely one of those. And he has a checkered past. You know what kind of person I was? An abusive? Alcoholic? Yeah, but those roles are way more interesting than this one. The music is telling me that this is tote serious. Mmm, he's a popular evangelical, and his views are being silenced, just like Iwo Jima. All of the greats support John Luther, even Pastor Ryan Morris, played by, uh, wait a minute, that's Brad Stein. You know, Brad Stein, Christian stand-up comedian, and gay Jesus, the white Christmas supremacist from Christmas with a capital C. Don't you remember that movie? Someone told me Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh, this movie better not have a coffee shop in it or get really scary. With a warm-up like this, the main act is gonna be a sick kitten. He's a trustworthy man, very meticulous. Very meticulous. He's actually the first pastor I've ever worked with that irons his Bible. Well, it says truth live. Doesn't say anything about laughs. If there's one evil politician who can smell a rat, it's Bruce Davison. He was Willard! Senator Harrison wants John to support the Faith in Fairness Act. Don't know what that is? Neither do I. And neither does the movie. Yet. Wait till you find out what it actually is. John declines because he's got a crowd to please. Tonight, I believe that we are headed as a nation towards a great spiritual awakening. You don't believe a single word coming out of your mouth, James Remar. He goes through most of the movie doing a Thomas Hayden Church impression. All I'm focused on is preaching this book. It's not illegal to teach the gospel in this country yet, is it? I cannot water down the gospel to advance anybody's political agenda. James Remar gives so little of a shit in this, you can practically feel him laughing internally at all the lines. Uh, Brad Stein said you did a good job, so you must have sucked. Forget the politics. You get back in that ring and you bring those people what they came to hear. You bring the truth, brother. Go get him. Lay off the cocaine. Keep showing us the word truth. Maybe then we'll forget it's bullshit. We know that only the word of God can bring peace to the heart of man. You cannot legislate the power of God. He unapologetically is just going for it in this role. He might as well be playing Raiden again. Oh shit, someone got Brad Stein's rabies medicine. You've never had a ride like this before. I guarantee it. I guess drugs really are the only way to get through this movie. Sadly, this is what became of Richard when Samantha broke up with him. I don't know though, he seems trustworthy. 
Is there any way you can reschedule? I'll tell you what, baby. You go home with mommy, straight to bed, and when you wake up, I'll be there. Mm, I'd vote for him. Although watching Remar play a charismatic televangelist is exactly what villain James Remar would do, I keep waiting for him to turn out to be the bad guy. In any other James Remar movie, this character would be a villain. Even when he's kidnapped and forced into taking scandalous photos, and the drugged girl is murdered. Honestly, I really don't think any of that would bring down his career. At this point, I think Ajax could run for president. Good thing they're not doing this out in the open. I wonder how the villains are gonna be caught. This conspiracy goes so deep that even the cops are in on it. And bad comedians. Oh god, I had so much to drink. I think I ended up in a Christian persecution film. I also think I killed Don Scardino. Look, sir, I know you're bleeding from the head, but it's company policy that you can't use the men's room. It's company policy. Don't you know who I am? I'm Dexter's dad, goddammit! Meanwhile, at his wife Monica's place, everyone already tells her that John is guilty, even on the news. Man, a car, my wallet, my ID. statutory rape, child endangerment, drug possession, and leaving the scene of an accident. Talk about a relapse. This is snark news at nine. No, no, don't trust the senator. He tried pulling the same shit when he framed the X-Men. Now he goes to the only place he can turn to, a candle shop. I don't know what you've heard. I didn't hurt anybody. Holy shit, it's Kelsey Grammer! Wait, that's actor and former Senator Fred Dalton Thompson. He must be leading the sanctuary of character actors. James Remar is more than welcome there. Fred knows about how politicians are Christian and persecuted. He was a Christian senator, and nothing happened. But he was in God's Not Dead too, so he knows a little something about bullshit persecution. Fred gives him the bad news. You're going to be charged with first degree murder. How does he know this? He's got to wash away all his sins, and by that I mean the Psycho remake. John has no choice but to fight these charges. Godspeed. Thanks, Fred Dalton Williamson. Got another one of those heaven sticks? This is just like that time an evangelical didn't support Obama repealing Don't Ask, Don't Tell. So Obama shot him. Great, now the villains have terrible comic reliefs on their side. Won't you, Ryan? I know I've been, I've been watching you for years now. You do fine, selfless work. <laughs> Did you see Christmas with a capital C? No God made that. Well, I'd like to think God had a hand in that, but uh, I appreciate that. Then God has a shitty sense of humor. I joke, but Brad Stein is way better in this movie than in Christmas with a capital C. Maybe it's the lack of beard. Probably the lack of beard. And that he's supposed to be evil in this one. God, James Remar is not only too good for this movie, but he's also too sexy for this movie. I don't think this movie is getting the reaction it wants. Something wrong with your eyes? <laughs> no. Mm, he is sexy. He can hammer me on a wooden cross. And just when I said Brad Stein is okay in this movie, he starts acting weird. How sweet the sound. Ryan, please stop. Please. Does he always play a secret serial killer? Stein has been sent in to check on John's wife. I am not going to let you feel guilty for trying to take care of yourself. Again, at least he's supposed to be creepy in this one. This is like watching a pug dog take over the role of Carl from Ghost. And as you know, I am a man of his word. If the pug dog wanted to hump your leg... This conspiracy goes all the way to the conspiracy bunker. I want to state for the record that I find the very origins of this meeting... You were in Blue Velvet! The stonecutters are going to see to it that John Luther stays hidden. 
Sorry, Sam. Ziggy says you can't leap until you get Brad Stein to tell one funny joke. Unfortunately, this isn't a comedy. I believe he probably didn't do it. But the fact that he has not taken into consideration our needs... Ugh, the movie has convinced me of one thing. Brad Stein can act, so long as you don't inject him with adrenaline and ask him to complain about things baristas say. In this time of need, John turns to the good word. He reads about the time Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, so God framed him for the rape and murder of a whale. Don't forget, this is an American thriller! <sighs> oh, thanks, I thought he was French. He's dreaming that he's married to contemporary Christian singer Natalie Grant. Uh, oh, his wife in the movie is Natalie Grant. The only people who can help are tattoo employees. They have a giant American flag on the wall. Of course they can help. Oh, and the girl happened to be the one who recorded the whole incident. So, my brother, you better believe it's going to cost you. Tone it down, Lady Christopher Walken! Meanwhile, Brad Stein is under arrest for impersonating a villain of the week on Miami Vice. I hate it when cops harass innocent pastors while a wandering Fred Thompson breaks into people's yards. Senator Willard is still trying to convince people to support this religious reform bill, and only one thing will convince them. Hold the solidarity together that we have. A literal good versus evil stare down. Now he can tell John what's really going down. You ask the people in this country around here about the persecution of Christians, most times people would just smile and say, no such thing. <sighs> Not here. <laughs> yep. Um, I mean, well, yeah. Oh, and he doesn't add more to that, by the way. He quickly changes the subject. John has to hurry up and sneak good jokes into Brad Stein's material. The whole country is hunting you. It's unreal what they're saying. Get this to Monica. Don't trust Brad Stein. He'll turn on you. He's the James Remar of this movie. This goes all the way to the president, who I think is supposed to be Bill Clinton. I wrap my little nubs around it and I squeeze. Until that devil didn't have any fight left. Hey, what should we have the president say? I don't know, throw in some nonsense that sounds like he's raping a snake. Cause he's the devil! Oh, and I think the purge is going on. Or the hitmen forgot to take their caps off when they got out of the shower. Here is the evidence that proves John is innocent. Guess the movie could end now. We're only halfway through this. Now I hate the villains too. This movie could have been over with. Maybe if John didn't take a fucking swim break while being a fucking fugitive, he could have saved Pastor Fred. He is not going to react well to this. I can't believe you committed suicide. I cannot believe you committed suicide. Now that's the kind of performance I expect out of this film. The persecution in this film is about as real as this fire. Stein is so ADHD, I think he ad-libs punching at a fly. Oh, I can't speak to that. I, how would I know? Look, you got Luther Spiles. Had an enemy. Yeah, we're well aware of his activities. Brad Stein is like Dave Coulier if he were doused with holy water. If John has time for a swim break, then he has time for a church break. Yeah, we don't know who you are. Cut to the next scene. This movie is full of shit I don't care about. My name is William. I don't care about you, William. Here we finally get a sense of what the bill is about. Our opponents boldly stated that we could never have Christians and Jews and Muslims standing together in solidarity. Dead wrong. Jesus, did you kill them? What the bill is about, by the way, <laughs> get ready for this, is about diversity. Oh no! Evil! Oh my god, all religions being equal? I have to stop him! 
Yes, believe in my round table of different faiths, or I will fucking kill you! John gets the hell out of there just as the editor discovers the slow-mo button. Wait till he finds the fast motion button. I wish I could fast forward the whole movie. Now is the time to confront the senator's anti-Christian supremacy law. You switched the samples. He falsified his research so Devlin McGregor could give you Provasic. You kill Lentz too. Oh, sorry, that's a better fugitive movie. I'm stuck with this shit. The real enemy is some guy with a nuclear weapon in a suitcase hiding in a mosque or a temple somewhere, and I can't get to him because I don't have the oversight. The villain keeps raising good points. There was no need to kill a girl and frame someone for murder over this. And here's how you make a four-year-old film feel dated. The public does not take kindly to a sexual predator on the loose. In movies, sure. In politics, mm, depends on if they're in your party or not. Oh, and John Luther is now the star of Prototype. His first mission, chop Brad Stein in half. But after the monologue. I'm not gonna ask you again, Ryan. Well, so much for Christmas with a capital C, too. This is John's former board of supporters, who are now anti-John because of charts and graphs. Now we're talking. Look at this. Not bad. Look at those numbers. Not bad for tax money. Every scene in the second half of this film feels like it could be the final scene. I built this place with my bare hands. Now you're in bed with the government. Yes, but charts! Graphs! This evil ministry needs some Jesus. There was once a man who wandered in the wilderness. Mr. Smith goes to a Washington bar and drunk monologues. And like the strip club he went to to forget about this movie, James Remar makes it rain. He tries to escape, but unfortunately the world's tallest secret serviceman sees him. Anyway, good job, um, Steve, Greg, I can't remember. Unfortunately, the budget could afford a car accident and more editing tricks. Why? Sure, he's been shot in the back, but he's got a bulletproof vest made of hallelujah. Here, get these scenes from the movie onto the news. That'll clear his name. All clear. John's name is cleared, the villain is dead. Why the fuck isn't this movie over yet? All right, almost Olivier Gruner is still after him. And holy shit, what the fuck is wrong with the pool? You know who could probably help you out, James Remar? The Dream Team. Too bad you tried killing them. Now we're gonna rough up this guy who's been shot, unless he's saved by gunfire. Boom, you're dead, motherfucker! <laughs> Believe in Jesus. Someone fix this damn pool so that James can take his daily swim. And stop giving a good performance, James Remar. This is persecuted, not Django Unchained. Fucking shoot someone. You think I will? There, that's the James Remar I know and love. Anyway, he's fine now. <laughs> thought you were dead. So did I. How are you doing? Spoken like a man who does not give a shit that John's alive. Even James looks fucking depressed he survived the end of the movie. Even though we were part of your nationwide manhunt, welcome back to the flock. God himself is going to take what happened to you and use it as testimony to reach millions more around the globe. That flock being the league of actors who don't give a shit about this movie or its message. I always hated this office. I'm leaving. Ooh, that's the I'm heading to the nearest bar, so wrap this up music. But is John joining the evil president who wants the evil diversity bill passed? I 
Let's be nice now, John. Real nice. <laughs> yes, now speak for religious equality or I'll shove a garden hose up your ass. <laughs> can't wait to see the speech that he gives. Is he gonna save Christianity and save the world? Nope. Cock blocked by the director. So yes, the movie is written and directed by Daniel Lusco, a name that says, I'm almost a karate kid, and a face that says, I sacrificed a chicken to make this movie because I'm a fucking warlock. Persecuted is a movie about an evil senator who wants a televangelist dead because he doesn't support his religious equality bill. How do you think this movie fared critically? Boom, 0%, 11 out of 100, 3.6 out of 10. Cinema Snob episode. The thing wasn't even a hit with its audience, bringing in only a million dollars at the box office. So much for the sequels, persecuted games, and clear and persecuted danger. But this movie will not be silenced, so no one watched it. Ironically, the movie Silence handled persecution way better than the actual movie called Persecuted. Sure, there was a lot of murder and government conspiracy in this film, all in the name of persecuting TV evangelicals, but it's a good thing that no one in the film said happy holidays. <laughs> I don't know if I could handle that much persecution. Are you not true to your name? Sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Stone Gremlin Productions. Follow us on Twitter at The Cinema Snob or check out our homepage at thecinemasnob.com.